something, but I don't really like the idea of a duel either up there because I don't think you can get too much. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to send an axe and a wisp or something, and I don't think you can get CS, and I don't think you can get too much experience either if they play it correctly on Newbie's uh, side of things. Of course, they are gonna be offlaning the Nature's Prophet and playing a mid invoker in this game just because of how the draft is working out. And I think Newbie have much, much easier Radiant laning phase to play out here. This is the first time I see a core Rasta or core Shadow Shaman in this, uh, in this TI. Yeah, this is sure to be a mouse sports. Uh, well, they they have always been an interesting team to say the least, and they're going to be pulling out some uh, some new things here. I mean, Shadow Shaman is he's going all the way back into old Dota 1 days. He was occasionally seen as a core pickup, always being run as the mid, but this is one of the few times I've seen it here in Dota 2, and certainly the first time that I believe we've seen it in the group stages. So, Mouse Sports are going to be starting out with an early five-man rotation here into the enemy jungle, uh, trying to set themselves up with the uh, early vision to be able to lay down and block down, but can Mouse Sports actually go aggressive here and they can try to do this. I'm not exactly sure how they want to execute it. Okay, this is how it's going to be, I think. They're just going to send Razor up on a tri lane along with Lion and Wisp, mm -hmm. which is much stronger than doing it alongside of uh, Axe. And Axe is going to be solo laning against the uh, Nature's Prophet. That's the goal. And that's going to work out fine as long as the Furin doesn't get his face boots way too early. If he gets them really early, then Axe takes too much damage simply as uh, the right click is higher and Stout Shield is a little bit, you know, countered by face boots. We're going to have Illusions be the first book up here for Paz, so that's a nice start for their uh, aggro try. But yeah, I, I do agree. I mean, putting the Razor in their aggressive try lane is certainly the safer option. Axe would be more full-on commitment with their try lane, and I don't see that working out, especially up against the triple range uh, try lane of Newbie. Um, really being able to abuse that Axe being on the front lines with that uh, extra chilling touch hit. So I do agree with their uh, decision here to be lane, but it's still a very risky situation to be in because... Uh, uh, certainly, Newbie do have a strong trial in. They're already starting out right here by counter-warding the block. Yeah, and this lane, I don't think that Mouse have to be the aggressors at all on this lane. They just want to try and shut down the farm and Morphling a little bit. And mm -hmm. if they overcommit, you will see the damage coming out from Ancient Apparition. And the mobility from How as well as Telekinesis can easily pick off any hero. So uh, that's why I say they have to play this lane pretty carefully. Yeah, in the meantime, we're going to have a Nature's Prophet versus Axe uh, solo lane, which is pretty favorable for the Axe. I mean, he could just sit there and uh, he's going to start out with early regen, stout shield. There shouldn't be any problem dealing with the harassment of the Furion. And he'll actually get a lot of really early farm, which is exactly what Mount Sports want to see because they want to grab the early blink dagger, start moving around, uh, moving around the map, getting those pickoffs, and transitioning that into towers. That's what the Shadow Shaman mid is supposed to do for them get to that fast level 6 so they can have the wards available. Yeah, a high level Shadow Shaman can always be very intimidating when he has those wards really early. You can go for solo kills, but more importantly, you want to use them for those towers, as you say. And look at Newbie just going for the second pull through here, already having that D ward to pull to the small camp. That's stealing something here from SSS, just trying to last hit. The big creep is the important one, though. Yeah, this is not a good position for Mouse Sports to be in like this, just because I, I don't know if they just go and look at it and say, okay, our aggressive tri lane really isn't going to work out, so they're moving Paz around. Yeah, but it feels like they're they're starting out with a defeatist attitude, which is like, all right, this lanes are kind of already lost. Let's try and transition this into dual lanes. And uh, really, I, I mean, as much as a mid game, I see this all the time. A mid game focused lineup that isn't able to win their lanes is doomed to fail. It seems just because if you can't win your lanes, if you actually lose your laning phase, you already set at a disadvantage and then you try and force the mid game aggressively like that. It's a full switch by the way. I'm looking at it now and PyCat is having travel uh, or a TP scroll already and that's way too early to just casually have a TP scroll to be ready to counter gank. Mm -hmm. It could also be just sending PyCat into jungle and solo laning Lion bottom. Can you imagine that? Solo mid Rasta? Yeah, I guess just so. We're just the top aggression. lane. MSS has already been telekinesis up, taking a huge amount of damage. So the right clicks will be able to seal the deal. Yeah. San Shang grabs that this first. This is why you don't go aggressive against AA Rubik Morphling lane. That was way, way, way too aggressive by Mouse, and not really paying any respect to the strength of this tri lane, which is the right clicks just bringing him down so easily.
And you can see, I, I mean, I guess I kind of understand being able to have a Lion as well as a Shadow Shaman both basically be solos at this point in time. If Axe is going to be spending all his time in the jungle, um, it, Axe is a decent jungler once he hits level 3, so this is not a terrible idea by Mouse, but at the same time, you have to actually be able to make sure that your dual lane doesn't feed too much in order to make this successful. The Lion as well as the Shadow Shaman being able to pick up their fast level 6s can play a huge impact going into the mid game as long as this tri lane isn't too fed. I would have mind like having someone go lane and then go off the lane to go jungle and leave a support to take the experience if it's the plan all along but looking at this game they go up aggressive tri lane trying to do something get dewarded immediately abandon ship and just try to run down bottom lane with lion trying now to do something against oh, here. banana's gonna catch him once again mss pulled back into telekinesis mss starts stealing some of that damage away from how but they do finish him off real quickly the sun strike even going down but uh, wasn't even needed Oh. So, another feed. Another Razor feed, going down. and this top lane is really hard to survive on. Axe TP top now, we have haste and double damage on Fata on mid lane. So he's super dangerous now, but he can't really rotate to top lane yet. But, uh, this is... This is why it's so dangerous to go aggressive tri lane against an AA. A lot of teams used to pick AA to counter tri lanes, you know? Mm -hmm. As in a tri versus tri scenario, you just pick AA and you know that you win the tri lane. Pretty much no matter what the other heroes were, you were always stronger. Right, because anytime they actually try to go on you, you would always be able to have the advantage in just playing right clicks due to the uh, chilling oh, yeah. touch. So. Level 1, that's, you know, 450 magical damage from chilling touch mm -hmm. directed to one person just by right clicking the right target if you all get off your three attacks. So uh, it's a substantial amount of damage. Now PyCat's going to run into these two supports, not killing either one of them. And now PyCat's a little bit of surprise there. Doesn't pay off. Now they're going to be chased away. Misery in some trouble is going to be taking the waveform damage. Should be able to get out just barely with a sliver of health there. PyCat fights back the rest, yeah. but uh, I mean, okay, now I can see the Axe and Wiz dual lane. I can see the possibilities here, but Maybe. it seems like they're moving around so much around the map. And look at MSS. He's so gimped right now. He's going up against a Furion who has phase boots. Yeah, exactly. This this is a hard lane, to be honest. Xiao8 is really having fun on his lane, even having that Orb of Venom just to harass even more effectively. He can bully a Razor completely because he doesn't have any boots on his own. And top lane, I don't think anything can lane up here at this point, to be honest, because sure, they don't have mana right now, but with the Clarity, soon they will have Chilling Touch available as well as, well as uh, Cold Feet, and then you will simply die. Oh, that smoke was actually revealed. Banana smoking way too close to a lane. So. Or Rubik's solo smoke should be detected by mouse as even the morphling on the lane got smoked while he was last hitting. Well, he's going to find himself an invis here, this top lane, and is going to be running directly into okay. Feta in the process. Might be able to actually grab this kill real quickly. The Furion's coming in. There goes the Telkinesis, the pullback. Nice double earth spike there. Feta tries to teleport himself away, but the stun coming out from Moo with Cold Snap will put an end to that one. Three kills already on the board for Newbie, taking early control of this laning phase. That was at least a big rotation coming out from Newbie, forcing four heroes to come there. But meanwhile, Mouse, sure, they only lose one hero for four hero rotation but pass and misery were also sort of there just not being able to do anything so you could almost say it was four on three but the uh, smoking now trying to go for mid with a tp coming in from rasta when he respawns or oh, actually has yeah, cooldown still from trying to tp away uh, that's tough I, I almost want to like just see Mouseboard start grouping up a little bit. Not not grouping up entirely, but I want to start making use of the Shadow Shaman mid. He just picked up his level 6. The wards are really dangerous at this point in time, and it feels like they're so far behind that any static laning situation is going to go poorly against them. So, But I'm, I'm just not entirely convinced that actually moving around is going to give them an advantage uh, because they're also have falling a behind. Yeah, they're falling behind really fast in experience. Look at it. 3,000 experience advantage right now on newbie. So move, the more you move around, the more you go as five, the more you fall behind in experience. You need to find kills. You need to find some farm with some hero. And they actually gotta find San Sheng here. Here, if they tether, oh, this is uh, not good enough because look what's happening on the side. We have two uh, two heroes coming in from the side. Shao Wade as well as Banana. They start going for Pie Cat, letting loose the Furion Ultimate. It's going to do a nice little bit of nuking damage, and they will both try and back themselves way farther down. Beta oh, actually going for move, but completely overextending himself. Sunstrike won't land, but the right clicks will do the trick. He goes down to kill just right clicks. To yeah, these two heroes just right clicking with some cold snap. He dies immediately. Top lane, they're not trying to go on a Morphling, but Morphling, not really the easiest one to catch. Waveforms aggressively even, to TP to his lane. 
And this feels like just an exercise in futility here as PyCat, like, moving to try and gank out the Morphling. You knew that was never going to work. And uh, without a possible blink deck and another call missing from PyCat there, how he's even going to go from Misery here? A couple of right clicks and away for my god. That was a 2v1 engagement there yeah. where Mousebart's actually trying to go on the Morphling and instantly just get turned around on the moment the they miss the call. Pain of being a level 3 hero going up against a level 7 hero. It doesn't matter if you have a friend next to you. He can just wave in and kill this Wisp really easily. So, uh, Mouseports, I'm not sure what they should be doing right now. The early rotation says the way they just put the lanes have put them in this really, really horrible position. The aggressive trial that they immediately abandoned, running across the entire map. It's a lot of time wasted, and that's why you see gold and experience both plummeting more and more towards newbie's favor. So, uh, they, they put themselves in a grave, you could say, and they have to climb out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've already switched to networks just because it seems like this CS, while it does give some of the story, it just doesn't give the full story. Which oh, is not in this the game, top no. three, uh, top three net worth on the board are all newbie members. It's the three cores. Just because their lane phase has gone so well, here comes the first earnest push out of Mouse. They're going to use the first set of Serpent Wards in this mid lane, but newbie, I believe, can actually form a decent amount of defense here. Not if they overwhelm them, though. Look at they have Axe behind here. Maybe they can just rush in, overwhelm the tower, and actually take it. Let's try. And Pycat's going to run right past Moo here because he's trying to chase Banana completely out of lane, but they have no real jump without a blink dagger, so Banana just runs himself away. Tier 1 tower will go down, but at the same time, they are being split push at the top lane. It's going to be a trade one for one. At least it's a tower gain for Mouse, and at their stage, anything is something, you know? They really need to struggle for whatever they can get. If it's a 1-1 one -one trade that's a fair trade, that's actually good for a team that's this far behind, to be honest. If you're ahead, you don't want to give anything away, so uh, nice play overall by Mouse there, zoning out the Rubik and just claiming this tower. Banana spending a nice little time at the bottom lane, free farming. Radiant's he's actually just picked up his level under. 6, and he's got a good host of abilities to be able to steal. Uh, the best of which is probably going to be the Serpent Wards, which uh, he should have access to quite frequently as uh, without a Blink Dagger on the Shadow Shaman. Again, they're like, Mouse Wards rely so heavily on initiation between the Axe and the Shadow Shaman. Uh, they, they just have, like, they just run at the enemy, but Newbie can have so many different options at that point. If, yeah. if all it is is just a five man push into a tower. Yeah, and also spells from Lion are also really amazing to steal Earth Spike and Hex. These spells are so huge to get on Rubik. You already have your Disable from Telekinesis, so any Disable spell is amazing. And uh, yeah, if he's really on point, might even steal Finger of Death in this game. It's a really, really big solo kill potential. But. Now it seems Mouse want to try and group up down here on bottom lane and also trying to get level 6 on Mystery by just putting him solo on top lane for a while. He does have 1200 gold, so quite a lot of gold on the, on the Wisp right here. Yeah, but what is a Wisp really going to do with this amount of gold? It's not going to be a game changing item, house. that's for sure. A house. Small house. Well, Banana and Moo gonna go aggressively out here. Gonna run into Puss. Oh dear, they're gonna run right into Puss. Trapped up. A throws out of Earth Spike, trying to escape through the back door. It's Eats Wave through G, but Puss. Oh man, that Furian Ultimate just tearing him a new one as he completely disappears. And well, I, I don't know what to say, man. Newbie are now gonna be able to take another tier one tower at this point. It's six to zero, 12 minutes in. Yeah, no contest. They're just gonna back off, it seems. They don't really wanna fight against this. They know how Sang Chang is really, really strong at this point with his uh, chilling touch and even the ulti. And he has an urn now, so if they get one more kill, he can just keep healing up his teammates and snowball. Keep going. <laughs> Top lane now as well. See how just aggressively looking at this. That wisp gets close to the wave, and he's like, "What are you? What are you doing? Could, could I, I farm here. you too? Could yeah. I? Is, are you gold? <laughs> glowing, glowing orb of gold. That is currently misery's life. Yeah. Well, he almost has to relocate, but they don't have like if they had a tiny, for example, like if Mouse Boards had the fourth pick, they could have picked up the tiny and have the wisp tiny combination, but they chose instead to try and get some other hero to go with the Wisp, and that is clearly going to be Axe. That's the best possible hero that they have, but I don't even see the Relocate doing that much for them. Yeah, that's really true. I think 
There's nothing to relocate gank with. You can maybe go with axe and try and do something. But look at this. Already now, newbie no. Oh, Fader. Exactly in some trouble. Sunstrike over the top. He will be able to dodge Sunstrike. Instantly turn around. That's a beautiful reaction from Fader. And with the relocate as well, they actually get Xiao Wei. That should have been almost an instant kill on Fader with the double global ultimates. Well, triple actually with uh, Furion ult as well as the Sunstrike. I and thought the newbie had a really good read there on what the enemy were doing, which is nothing, and that's why they were going for the <laughs> Roshan, but then yeah. suddenly they decide, just because they have this global combination of Sunstrike, AA, Ulti, and Furion, trying to go for a gang here, but it was really not needed. They could have taken Roshan so easily. Nothing to contest them at this point in the game. So uh, a lot of value lost there for Newbie, and not even gonna go for the Roshan now. Maybe hesitating a lot, and gotta go back for it now, but uh, it could have been a lot faster and a lot smoother. They're going to be a three-man smoke here from Mouse. They're going to try and catch out how by revealing the Blink Dagger on PyCat for the first time. And this, if this rotation works out, it's going to delay the Lincoln's pickup by how significantly. And that's great, but look at him. He's already teleporting away. He's not going to be caught. He's going to join the rest of his team in the Roche Pit and maybe even grab the Aegis for himself. Yeah, the Aegis would be really good for him. So after pushing out this mid lane, Morphling could just go take this. Also, taking it on Invoker is going to be just fine, though. And... Hey, top tower has a lot of HP, but they're just gonna go and pressure mid instead, it seems. They have the global ulti still flying out. Dyer's top tower. Nice, Lad's gonna do a lot here. Oh, Misery! No, not like this, buddy. He may take out from this one. It's gonna be real he'll be close. Fine. He'll be fine from this one. But mid tower yeah. is now gonna be pressured, and he can't really defend because he TP'd back to base. Radiant's middle tower is under yeah, I can't looking for the opening, Radiant's but they already revealed him, and they don't fallen. even care. They still hold axe here, one tower. That and he's gonna run right into Moo now. Fallen. Support spirits doing a lot of damage and held up easily. There's nothing Pycat can do at that point. Caught out and ripped to shred. One to seven now. Yeah. As, uh, well, newbie, just continue marching on. They can now turn Radiant's this into taking map attack. control, farming up. They're not a team that's going to be able to really take advantage of the situation and end the game by 20 minutes or even 25. They have much, much better late game. So this game may drag out for a while, but newbie should always hold the better map control and take advantage of that by spreading out, getting the better farm out of the map. And overall, newbie will just start reigning supreme economically. Yeah, they should. And something that we normally see when teams start taking down a lot of towers and with a strat like this, Furion and uh, Invoker, is that they go for the Necrobook. And we already see two Necrobooks finished up here on the side of Newbie. Look at these getting level 3 and look at the team of Mouse. If they send them after Razor or send them after Axe, they will kill themselves <laughs> using these Necrobooks. Because Axe will spin and re on the retaliation and Razor with his ulti will also kill the Necrobooks. So it's a really nice game to go for this. Yeah, so it's going to be able to give them pushing power, but it's also just the anti-mouse lineup it is really it is. what it comes down to. The Necronomicon is going to do just uh, destroy both cores. We're going to see uh, Banana coming in, the Ice Blast over the top, Sunstrike has already land, MSS, he's actually going to pop from that one. Banana comes in, just gets a solo kill. With no the commitment them, whatsoever, the just movies. blasting one guy up immediately, so easily with this global spell, and of course, Banana just being there saying, hey, I'm level 10, I'm a support, higher level than anyone I'll on relocate team. to the bottom lane, they're gonna catch out Xiao Wei with that one, Earth Spike as well as the Finger Death being used to finish him off. Now, how in small amount of trouble, but he always has to replicate to jump to, even waveforms through Poss before he makes the leap away, and is now gonna go to farming up the mid lane, because why not? He's soon gonna have his Lincolns. Yeah, exactly, he has the entire thing now when he buys it, so he's gonna be just fine with that item pickup. Sunstrike, Pycat, oh! Nice. Beautiful Stop play right. by Moo, and now Fate is in trouble. He hexes up Moo, but oh, look at that fast chicken. The uh, Haze Rune, he's gonna be able to latch on to Fate a little bit more. Necronomicon, and the oh, hole finishing him off real quickly. The shock actually killed the melee Necronomicon minion, and that will actually end Fate's life. Meanwhile, we have an invoker basically 1v3 in this bottom lane. How and Xiao 8 are pushing in the middle tier 2 with 17 minutes in with a Morphling and a Furion. This shouldn't be happening this quickly. Yeah, it's really going down fast right now with Moo making such big plays on bottom lane, they're also looking to do something here if Razor would stay, but they get to tier 2 mid, they get solo kills with their invoker without even losing the Aegis, and that's another big thing. He was not even risking anything. Mm -hmm. What would Mouse gain if they possibly brought him down once there? They would never be able to bring him down twice in a row, and he would just respawn full HP, full mana, and shove away whoever lived after bringing him down. So, really low risk, uh, oh, low reward and high risk for Mouse, and Mu just having a lot of fun right now.
Zhao Wade is going to go ahead and uh, hold up his Necronomicon march, apparently, and, and grab himself a mech. Uh, the Invoker has already got himself a Necronomicon 3 Pycat. Looking for the jump onto How to relocate over the top. If they have the Lion coming in, Pots, oh, the Lincoln spoiling everything here. Earth Spike goes off, but How well healthy enough to be able to survive through a Lion Ultimate. And that's why he's just going to keep waveforming through, get both of the supports on the side. Now, Pycat has to find an opening to be able to teleport away, but that's just not going to happen, man. He's trying to get some distance to be able to blink. One second, two seconds to teleport away, and he will be able to make himself out, as there's just no stuns left with Hao having no mana. But that was still an attempted gank by Mouse that goes terribly, terribly wrong, Dyer's as the only deaths are on the two attack. supports. Yeah, the sad times when whenever your Wisp ulti is ready, it means that you will feed more instead of getting kills across the map. <laughs> it's really not the best of times for uh, for Mouse right now. 2 and 12 against Newbie, really being schooled here, just pulling a uh, pulling mouse ports apart you'll be winning on all fronts and having the more solid and more easy to play late game as well with the invoker morphing nature's profit wait shall wait getting caught here though yeah how's gonna join him here but four members of the mouse sports team are here and gonna try and just focus on one hero if they can get him shall wait already sprouting the attempt at a teleport interrupted by an earth spike and there's the first dunk of the game but it's only a small pittance as uh, Mouse Boards are going to need a lot more, and they can't Oh, they might turn this out. around. They have both the Invoker coming here with his entire army from behind. Yeah, Pycat's going to jump onto Boo as he sees him coming in, but Boo does have the Aegis. Doesn't matter if he dies, and that's why Fate is going to lock onto Banana in the back, and the ultimate goes off. There goes Moo, and his Aegis, MSS, dies as the uh, Ancient Apparition ultimate is able to finish him off, and all around, Newbie, happy with the way that fight went, but uh, Mouse Sports, I think they're lucky to be alive there. That could have been so much worse. Yeah, Mouse Sports actually had good panic control there in that fight. Mm -hmm. They Radiance immediately blinked in and called the Invoker, attack. and that saved everyone, so Radiance good reaction there. So they're going to go back in. Pycat looking for an opening. What's actually be able to grab that ancient apparition real quickly? Doesn't have his ultimate. They can still finish him off though. And Mu is actually getting low as well. The mech goes off, saving the heroes. But how? Ah, uh, well, he's gonna end this with a double kill. The aggression from Mouse Sports instantly stifled. And now Newbie gonna be able to claim a tier two. Yeah, tier two is most definitely going down. And this is still, even though they got some kills, it's mostly Xiao Wei. He's the one who died three times, two deaths on the supports, and then you have Hao and Mu who never died. Sure, the ages, but it doesn't really count. No economic damage, no experience damage to him. So the pressure already on the tier three tower. Just gotta deal some damage and then back off. Newbie in really dominant control of this game. Sports in the exact opposite position that they were in in the first game of the tiebreaker round, which is uh, well, Mouse Sports did have the lead. They were being the aggressors. They were controlling the game. The exact, but the problem is with this game. Last last time, Mouse Sports. They were the aggressors. They didn't necessarily have the better late game. 100%. Oh, pass. Oh man. That yeah. is just dirty. That's what that is. Dirty. The evil, evil lineup of newbies. So strong. So sexy. They, they can just kill heroes from a distance between the Necronomicons, the Mass Necronomicons. They didn't even use out. Nature's Profit Ulti. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's how unnecessary. It was just like, ah, that's going to be overkill. Exactly. It's, oh, point? oh, you don't have enough HP. Let's let's keep this one ready for when we kill your carry with, you know, our long distance nuke. What does Misery do with his gold, by the way? He's got 2,000 in the bank. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> he should probably buy something, is all I feel. I don't know what he wants to buy, though, because they actually went for Mech on Razor in this game. Yeah, they're gonna try and jump on MSS. Sunstrike so right in the Ancient Apparition Ultimate, but Pycat, quick to respond as Banana instantly falters onto that spin. Sunshang is gonna be chased in as well, and they can get two supports, but no, 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 no. Not up against Moon, not like this. Pycat has already gone down. Misery will be able to go back to his base with his ultimate. Fading out, Paz makes the teleport oh, away geez, just in that time. Was close. Really, really close that they bring him down only with right clicks. If Xiao8 came in a little bit sooner, Interesting to see, by the way, that he bought the Necro 1 and then kicked back for Mechansom and then kept building his Necro. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, a little bit weird, surprising even, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Radiance Level 1 Necro is, is under attack. surprisingly weak. How on the mid lane? Are they gonna try and kill him? They have Blink Dagger on Rasta, but yeah, I don't know about this. Uh, Popping the Link now the follow up Hex and the Warps over the top. They're gonna be able to do a lot of damage to Hal, but he's so damn tanky. Look at that, every single ultimate being used, and Hal still waveforming out. Warping the strength even more, and now even the Ghost Scepter going off, and that's gonna stop Mal from being able to claim that kill. MSS trying to back himself away. Misery also trying to get out, will have a tether to be able to jump away too, and I think Mal's. 
Well, really, they Radiant finally went for a gank, and that didn't result in a death on their own team. So, That's even though they true. didn't get the morphling... Good flame. gank, no one on your team died. <laughs> Successful gank, boys. We can go home. There was no... Normally you talk about the wisdom, you talk about the global ganking. Really, this game has been about the global feeding. Every single yeah. time they go for a relocate in, somebody ends up dying. Yeah, Mouse definitely in a struggle here. I mean, it's just... You have to give... Credit to the picks though, and look in the base with the sun striking global. Oh, this is God. a dead wish. <laughs> and even if you're an ulti, this is just Chow Wei saying, okay, I want that money actually. It looks kind of tasty. <laughs> I'll take my ulti for that. Sun Shang, no mercy, please don't get the uh, don't get the Aghanims upgrade. That is just cruel and unusual treatment at this point. Yeah, he almost has it. Sun Shang is only <laughs> 430 gold, 20 gold even, away from this AA ulti upgrade. We're level 2 ulti already. You, do you know how much damage that is already? That's 20 damage for like 18 seconds, I believe. Uh, 15 oh seconds, my. yeah. It's, it's a really long time. <laughs> yeah, the supports will not be happy. You saw that Wisp from only a Sun Strike. That's a max level Sun Strike, by the way. 475 pure damage. Yeah. Gee. Jesus. Rip. Dire straits right now for Mouse. Rip Ward. That, that one's going down pretty soon here. They've already revealed it with uh, a Catawork place earlier. And Newbie also have a free Roshan. And I say free, it's 100%. It's just open there. It's like it's one of those items just sitting in front of the house. Like anybody take it at this point because Mouse boards have no way to move. They can't even move outside of their base, let alone cross the river. And look at that, shotgun. I mean, if you wanted more burst damage, you got it. Yeah, I mean, the pickoff potential now from Newbie. They can literally kill Mouse anywhere on the map, wherever they are. With zero commitment. I wouldn't be like, surprised to see Xiao Wei TP into the enemy base and drop an observe ward behind the enemy lines, down along, uh, straight beneath the tier 4 towers, just to have vision into the enemy base so you can set up these global ultis whenever someone backs. Alright, item update. Necrobook 3 on Xiao Wei, we have the Aghanims for the Ancient Apparition, Ethereal Blade for Hal, uh, we also have a another Necrobook 3 on the Invoker, that one's been up for a while. Uh, his recent pickup was Boots of Travel, and even Banana has a Blink Dagger, and he's had that one for a while. As Blade uh, Mail Max, though? Just yeah, and, and, and here's the item update for Mouse. Blade, Blade Mail. mail. <laughs> that, yeah. I, well, I mean, it's no, not no, entirely no. true. New reports say there is a hood of defiance <laughs> on Wisp. He doesn't like to damage. Sadly for him, 475 damage, pure damage from Invoker, means that if the Sunstrike lands, he still loses more than half his HP from this one nuke. Yeah, really, that hood is only helpful uh, if he's able to finish up a pipe, and that is still a long ways away for a Wisp it's in a losing game like this. Good against AA, at least, but yeah. And uh, let's see if they can hold it. Oh, beta, anyway. goodbye, buddy. They, they try to even stop how they actually do get the call on him. He's pretty deep in the base, but look how tanky it is. It just doesn't matter. All of his damage is being sapped away. MSS does have a good amount of extra damage, but I don't think it matters, man. Look at the Necrobook army just steamrolling through tier 3s and now going to work on tier 4. And actually, Pycat going to be jumping in, holding on to 2. Ward's being dropped out. Meteor doing a huge amount of damage, though. And I think that's spells the oh, end of the just melting. Two go down. GG! Newbie, man, they set an example with that one. They say, you know what? We may have actually gone to the group stage. It was a, a pretty bad group stage all around for them. And being a team that I think many, many were favoring to be in the top four, uh, Newbie have done so much in the, the recent memory that it's surprising to see them suffering. But hey, this tiebreaker, they say, you know what? These guys aren't on our level. LGD, Mouse Sports, no, 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 no. Those guys don't matter to us. We steamroll through these, and we're going to move all the way to the top. Yeah, that was that was very very convincing from newbie. Really strong performance. So that means 